evangelical Christians, the very people whose identity in the past was linked to their reliance on the Bible for their ultimate authority of all, in all things. Surveys by the Barna Group reveal that among those claiming to be evangelicals today, 19% are living with a partner outside of marriage. Now back in the day when I was growing up, that was called adultery or fornication. 37% do not believe the Bible to be totally accurate. Now these are professed the cream of the crop of Christianities. 45% do not believe Jesus was sinless. 52% do not believe Satan is real. 57% do not believe that Jesus is the only way to eternity. And that, I'm, I just imagine, is getting higher every day. Because how many, well, that's your truth. But this is my truth. Now that may be good enough for you, but the way I see it. I believe if you're sincere, I don't care what you are, you're going to go to heaven. <laughs> because God loves you. Why well, I heard a preacher on television the other day, he, he come on my TV and he said, God loves you. You don't have to change. You don't have to become a new creature. God loves you just the way you are. Now, if you believe that, I've got some oceanfront of property I'd like to sell you in Arizona. But they believe it. 57% believe that good works play a part in gaining eternal life. Oh yeah, most of, most of people will tell you, I've had it told, this is the way I was taught. Oh yeah, we believe in grace. But after you get saved, brother, it's all predicated on your, how you walk, whether you stay saved or not. In other words, it's all predicated on your life. Brother and sister, it's easy to see the apostasy today. This, this is no hidden revelation. It's very clear if people just want to see it. That's where we are today. Let's turn our Bibles now to our text on page 1 in Jude, verse 8 through 16 this morning, on page 1 of your handout. We are definitely living in the end time. Where it says that in that end time age that people will be lovers of their own selves, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, heady, high-minded, truce breakers, unreliable, false accusers. Brother and sister, it's easy to see the day we're living. Likewise, Oh, these filthy dreamers defile, despise dominion, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuked thee. But these speak evil of the, those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gainsaying of Cory. 
These are spots in your feast of charity. When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds that are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam. Now, brother and sister, this is a key verse. Notice what it says. And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. Why did the apostle phrase that verse like that? Why is it important? that you see that Enoch was the seventh generation from Adam. Why is that important? Well, I'm going to put it to you like this, and all you have to do is go to the, about the third chapter of Genesis, third and fourth chapter there, and you can, if you can count to seven, I mean, you can see it very clearly. But let me, let me run this by you so that you'll understand what it's showing. The Bible talks about that Adam and Eve had two sons, the way it's presented there. One named Abel and the other named Cain. Now y'all stay with me here. I'm about to unleash on you a wonderful revelation. But nowhere, now listen, nowhere in the Bible does it say that Cain was of Adam. He was not of Adam. And if you put him there, if you believe that Cain was the son of Adam, then there, Enoch could not be the seventh from Adam. Cain was not in the genealogy of Adam. But he was of that evil one. He was of his father, the devil. Right. You have to search. You just, all you have to do is just go over there and curse. It says the, about the genealogy of Adam and Adam uh, knew his wife Eve and she again brought forth a son. Now notice what it says there too. In his own likeness, in his own image. And he called his name en Enos. Why did, why did it go to the, why did the Bible says he, he looked like, he looked, he was the same image of his father Adam. He made it very clear. I tell you what, y'all looking at me like a little calf looking at a new gate. But let's turn our Bibles to Genesis. I'm getting, getting off my subject, but I shouldn't have probably brought it up. But I did, so let's just approach it here.
Adam knew his wife again, and she bare a son, and called his name Seth. For God said, She hath appointed me another seed instead of Abel. Whom And, and Seth, to him there is born a son, called his name Enos. Well, let's see, I want to... Well, has any of you Bible students found that verse yet? I sure ain't having any luck. <laughs> huh? 426. What? 426. 417. Yeah, I know that. Uh, I want to see it where it says after his own likeness and in his own image. Five. Three. Well, read it. What does it say? And Adam lived 130 years and he had a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. That's it. Look at Genesis chapter 5. Verse 3. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness after his image and called his name Seth. Everybody see that? Now, why, you know, if I bear a son, isn't he going to look, you know, you see how descriptive that is? But Cain did not resemble Adam at all. He was nothing like his so-called father. He was like his real father, Satan. Amen. So you got to pay attention, folks, little deals like that. It's nowhere in the Bible does it say that Cain fathered, that Adam fathered Cain. Okay, let's get off of that. I shouldn't have opened that door up. I didn't mean to. All right, let's turn to page two and let's read this same text here that we read out of the Amplified. Nevertheless, in like manner, these dreamers also corrupt the body, scorn and reject authority and government, and revile and libel and scoff at heavenly glories, the glorious ones. But when even the archangel Michael contending with the devil judicially argued or disputed about the body of Moses, he dared not presume to bring an abusive condemnation against him, but simply said, the Lord rebuke you. But these men revile, scoff, and snare, and sneer at anything they do not happen to be acquainted with and do not understand, and whatever they do understand physically, that which they know by mere instinct, they irrational as like irrational beast, by these they corrupt themselves and are destroyed, perished. Woe to them, for they have run riotously in the way of Cain, and have abandoned themselves for the sake of gain it offered them, following the heir of Balaam, and have perished in rebellion like that of Korah. These are hidden reefs, elements of danger in your love feasts, where they 
boldly feast scrumptiously, carousing together in your midst without scruples, providing for themselves alone. They are clouds without water, swept along by the winds, trees without fruit at the late autumn gathering time, twice doubly dead, lifeless, and plucked up by the roots. Wild waves of the sea, flinging up the foam of their own shame and disgrace, wandering stars for whom the gloom of eternal darkness has been reserved forever. It was of these people, moreover, that Enoch in the seventh generation from Adam prophesied when he said, Behold, the Lord comes with his myriads of holy ones, ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon all and to convict all the impious unholy ones of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in such an ungodly way and of all the severe abuse jarring things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. I would say the primary word in that scripture is ungodly, wouldn't you? I get that. All right, let's turn to page three in our notes. Likewise also, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion, and speak evil of, digni of dignities. Now, the Amplified says, nevertheless, in like manner, these dreamers also corrupt the body, scorn and reject authority and government and revile and libel and scoff at heavenly glories, the glorious ones. Now, in actuality, the text speaks of those who are deluded. Understand what they are in they are in denial. They are deluded. Now turn your Bibles to Second Timothy, Second Thessalonians, chapter two, and let's look at verse ten. Second Thessalonians, that's in the New Testament here. Second Thessalonians. Chapter two. Second Thessalonians chapter two. Verse ten. And with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. I want y'all to notice the reading here of this verse. Well, what was the primary cause of these people to depart and go into apostasy? What's the number one reason? They love the truth. That's right. They did not have a love for the truth. I mean, they were not passionate about it. You understand what I'm saying? That's when you are in love with something, you're passionate about it. You've got, you know, whatever comes, you're going to cling to it. You're passionate. Look at verse 11. And for this cause, because they have not a love for the truth, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Y'all understand how important it is not to just be involved with, with the things of God, but to be passionate. Amen. Whatever comes or goes, Lord, your word is true. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but his word shall never pass away. I don't care what the theologians say. I don't care what somebody says concerning. I know your word is truth. Me and Richard was talking this morning over at the fellowship hall. It's, it's, and I, 
By the way, I give, I brought you a copy of the magazine I was telling about. There's one for every family here, so be sure and pick up your copy this morning. Lay them back there on the table. How that they are redefining the Word of God. How that to satisfy modern man because the way of God is a straight and a narrow way. They have to uh, be inclusive. Today, everybody wants to be inclusive. But let me tell you something Jesus said. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. Exclusive. It is exclusive. It's not inclusive. It ain't everybody. This message is not for everybody. But it's for those that the Father had given me. It's for those whose names were written in the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world. God is not today presently adding names to, to the book. They were there before the foundation of the world. They never will be there. Amen. I am the way, the truth, and who is Christ? He is the Word. Yes. I get so sick and tired of these theologians today. They want to keep you from the things of God. It looks to me like. Oh, yeah, we read in the Bible about what they did over there in the book of Acts. How that, uh, that when the Holy Ghost came that they spoke in tongues and, and prophesied. Oh, they'll say, oh, but God don't do that today. That's Well, I can show you where God did it. I can show you in the Word where it's written. Now you show me in the Word where God took them out. Amen. They put their own interpretation to it. Well, after the last apostles, we don't we don't have to uh, we don't have talking in tongues today. That's naughty. You show me in the Word of God where God quit it. Said He's the same. Hebrews thirteen and eight says He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. A friend of mine here a while back, he had a preacher to come and visit him. And uh, he's one of them kind, you know, it's intellectual. So he asked the preacher, I got a bottle of my oil that's sitting up here too. He said, what's that bottle of oil doing here on the, in the front on the pulpit? And the pastor said, well, when people are sick, we anoint them with oil, like the Bible says, and we pray for them. And he scoffed at it. But it's clearly written in the scripture. They'll lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. What do you do when somebody in the congregation is sick? I read it last week. James said, you know, call for the elders of the church, anoint them with all, and pray over them. Pray the prayer of faith, and the prayer of faith shall raise them up. And if they've committed any sins, it shall be forgiven them. Not only is healing promised, but forgiveness of sins. Hallelujah! But oh, they scoff at it today. They scoff at it. That's what the theology will do for you a lot of times. Amen. This man-centered, everything's man-centered. Let me tell you something, folks. Everything that we preach is Christ-centered. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way. There's no other way. It is exclusive, the way of Christ. In him is salvation. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the bread of life. I am the light of life. It's all in Christ. But oh no, that's too, that's fanaticism. We don't believe in an outdated book like the Bible. You can't put your trust in the Bible. Well, what are you going to put your trust in? I can't think of, let me tell you something. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, right? And the, this Bible here is God on print. Men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. They didn't write their own thoughts. They wrote what the Holy Ghost gave them to write. Amen. And brother and sister, that's our final authority is the Word of God. Yes. 
but uh, that don't hold true today in most churches. But in actuality, the text that we just got through reading about these dreamers and these false, these false despisers of dominions and despisers of holy things, amen, they're deluded. God's, they, because they've rejected the knowledge of God, the Bible says in Romans chapter 1, he'll turn them over to a reprobate lie, a, a reprobate mind, that they should believe a lie and be damned. <laughs> That's right. They are deluded in two ways. The thought is that in spite of the three examples given in verses 5 and 7 that we talked about last week, those three examples of apostasy that was Israel, that was the angels, and that was Sodom and Gomorrah, that's the three witnesses that we had. Three examples, set biblical examples. Of the past, these apostates continue their rejection of the truth and rebellion of conduct in the same manner of these examples that we see in the scriptures. And that's Israel. You know what? It's amazing to me. People never learn. They never learn. And you know what? We're the same way. We never learn. But brother and sister, we got to learn here. We, we're running out of time. School's out. Amen. Second, these people live in a dream world of unreality and delusion. That's right. They live in a dream world. I had a woman tell me why. I never forget this. I was selling Bibles. Uh, we were over around Mountain Mountain View, Missouri, over in that area. I had another guy with me. He he was just coming with me to see what I had done. I'll never forget him, Brother Dowd. He was a he was a colonel in the Air Force. He flew them big old B twenty nines or something, big old planes. But anyway, he was with me, and he was just a young Christian too. But I would, we were sitting in this lady's house at the kitchen table. And you know how you'll talk to people before you got right into the sales presentation. And she began to talk about her ministry. And I was politely listening to her. And she said, bless God. She said, I know God called me to preach. And she said, I don't care what anybody says. I know God called me to preach. Boy, that was just all old brother uh, Dodd needed, buddy. He, he said, well, now, sister, here, here's what the Bible. And boy, I kicked him under the table, you know. He looked over there at me. I, I shook my head like that. So he, he dropped it. So, you know, I just let her talk after a while. Uh, so after we left the house, I said, brother Dodd, I said, now, you didn't hear what that lady said. She said, I don't care what anybody said. She know God called her to preach. Now you might as well, you might as well close up shop. She, she said she didn't care what you believed or anybody else. You could show her in the Bible. That ain't going to change her mind. Oh, he said, I guess you're right, Tom. I said, besides that, we sold the Bible, didn't we? Yeah, we sold the Bible. But if I would argue there with her, I wouldn't have sure sold her nothing. You see what I'm saying? I'd have made her an enemy. I'd made an enemy. I never will forget. <laughs> I got caught by surprise. I was in the store. I was delivering bread in Harville, Missouri. That's just on the other side of Papa Bluff. I had to stop every. I knew these people were Pentecostal people that owned the store. Their name was uh, Penrod. And so I brought my bread in that particular morning. And uh, the sister Penrod, she was checking my bread, you know, delivery. And she said, oh, Brother Tom, you ought to be in church with us this month, this weekend. Boy, we had a great service. Brother and sister so-and-so was here from Michigan. And she said, you know, they're both preachers. And I said, just before I had thought, you know, I said, well, Sister Penrod, I wish somebody showed me in the Bible where God ever called a woman to preach. 
And she said, well, I'm a preacher. Oh, boy, I said, I really stepped into it that time. I said, okay. I said, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> you know, if people think that, hey, you're not going to convince them any otherwise. Let them go. Let them, don't argue with them. What the Bible say, agree with your adversary. Agree with them. They're in God's hands. Amen. Okay. But I want you to notice here. They think their practices are okay. They do not expect judgment for their evil deeds. Look at Matthew chapter 7 verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, how many? Many. many. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that worked iniquity. You know, that's going to be the most di disappointed time for a lot of people in their life. You know, that is a very sobering passage of Scripture. In other words, what it's saying, God doesn't put his stamp of approval on everything that happens in his name. Yeah. Notice, defile the flesh. The apostates propagate, propagate bad doctrine. And this leads to bad conduct. Apostates do not lift the moral standards, but lower it. We see this in the moral decline of our nation. Apostates, they don't lift up the moral standards of God. They compromise with the world. They compromise every teaching, everything that they believe. They compromise, well, you know, that's, that's all right. Lord, no, just, just, just uh, go ahead. They don't dare to tell you the truth. They might lose a tithe payer. Somebody might get angry and walk out of the church. We can't afford that. Abortion, I'm on page four. Brother, like I said at the beginning of this message, this is no great mystery to me because I lived in a different time when there was people had morals. They had morals about them. You know, I'm going to make a statement here. If you saw a woman walk up the streets of Lutzville smoking a cigarette, Boy, you knew what she was. She was a low-class woman. Now, that's the way it was in my time. It's not that now. Let alone see the striptease that we've got to look at today. It's amazing to me, you know, how that these, how women like to expose herself. If they can get, I believe some of them, if you could just paint their clothes on them, I believe they'd like that. Just paint, if they could get it off easy. They want it skin tight. Whatever they put on, they want it skin tight because they want to reveal themselves. 